All right, so in this video, we're going to look at how the values of A and B affect the graphs of sine and cosine. So those A and B values are that A value is the one that's out in front of sine or cosine, and B is that value that's attached directly to X just on the inside of sine or cosine. Uh, so we have our graph of sine in blue and our graph of cosine in red. And if we change that value of A, we'll start there, that's going to stretch the graph vertically. So as I move A up here towards five, I can see that it stretches the graph up to be quite a bit taller than it used to be. So changing A is going to change the amplitude of that graph. Larger values of A will stretch it, stretch it up, whereas small values of A would shrink it down. See if I move close to zero, I get those graphs are smaller than they used to be. Uh, if I go past zero and the negative values for A, I end up getting a vertical reflection of both of those graphs. So where cosine used to start up at one, now it would start down at negative one and then move up from there and go through the rest of its pattern. Sine normally would start at zero and move up, but in this case, sine starts at zero and moves down after it's become negative. And I can also increase that value of A to be a large negative number and see that it would continue stretching it out as well. Now, if I change that value of B, uh, changing B is going to change the period so as I increase B, I'm actually going to be shrinking the graph horizontally. I'll bring it in tighter. So if I just take B to be equal to 3, for example, I have changed my graphs from having a period of 2 pi to having a period of only 2 pi over 3. The entire single cycle of a sine or a cosine graph fits between 0 and 2 pi over 3. Uh, meaning if I switch to having small values of b, small being less than 1, this thing would stretch out past 2 pi to elongate that graph horizontally. Uh, we will not be looking at any negative values for b. So, so far we'll only look at negative values on a. In problem three, we're going to be looking to graph 9 sine of 2 pi x. So to see what that would look like, I'll turn on sine over here. So I have my sine graph on in Desmos. I want to change my a value to 9. So increase this guy all the way up to 9. Uh, and then b is going to be 2 pi. It's not a graph 9 times sine of 2 pi x. So stuff that we know, no matter how we transform these graphs, that domain is always all real numbers. Now our amplitude we know is just the absolute value of a. So in our case, 9. That period is 2 pi over b. We know b is 2 pi. So that period should be 2 pi over 2 pi, which is 1. Next, that x scale is the period divided by 4. So 1 over 4. Now, to get our y minimum and our y maximum, uh, for right now, all we really need is the amplitude. That minimum value is going to be negative 9, and the maximum value will be positive 9. 
since we checked the range, we don't have D yet. So we aren't going to worry about that just yet. Our range will just be negative A to positive A. So negative 9 to positive 9. And we aren't considering the vertical shift or the phase shift just yet. So in this case, they're both 0. Putting all of that stuff into practice. So I'm going to want to mark off my graph with the x scale, starting at 0 and then going out four places. Since there are always five key points that I care about when I'm graphing any sine or cosine function, I want to have my starting point and four others. So I'm going to start at 0 and count out four more places. So one, two, three, four. And I'm going to count by that x scale. So 1 over 4, 2 over 4, 3 over 4, and 4 over 4. Next, I'm going to put my y maximum and my minimum values on the y axis. So 9 and negative 9. And lastly, I'll just need to get my five key points. I have a graph of sine, which means I start at the center line. And since there is no vertical shift, that means this graph just starts at 0, 0. This is a positive sine graph, meaning I should be moving up after I start the graph at 0. So at my next the next point along my x scale, I should be up at my maximum. After that, I return to the middle point, then down to a minimum, and then back to the middle. Lastly, I just need to connect these dots. And there I have my graph. Lastly, I should label my five key points. And that's my graph. Problem four, I'm looking at seven cosine of x over three. We'll turn on cosine, move a up to seven. And b down to one third. So this is our transformed graph of cosine. All right, now we're graphing 7 cosine of x over 3. Again, that domain, all real numbers. Nothing's going to change that. Uh, for that amplitude, I want the absolute value of a so the absolute value of 7, which is still 7. Next, I want the period of 2 pi, the period, which is equal to 2 pi over b. And here we know that b is 1 third. Since that interior is x over 3, it means b is 1 third. 
So the period is two pi divided by one third, which is six pi. Next, that x scale. Well, I know it's period over four. So six pi divided by four is three pi over two. Coming back around to that y minimum and y maximum, I should have negative seven up to positive seven. Since as long as I'm not dealing with a vertical shift, the min and max are just positive and negative, whatever the amplitude is. And the range, again, we still aren't working with a vertical shift. So just negative the, the amplitude to positive the amplitude. So negative seven to positive seven. All right, now to put the stuff on the graph. So as with the last graph, uh, I'm going to count out four additional tick marks away from zero. One, two, three, four. So that I can get my five key points, the first of which will be at zero and the next four at each of these tick marks. And those tick marks should count by the x scale. So three pi over two, six pi over two, nine pi over two, and 12 pi over two. I should then label my y scale where I need to go to seven on the positive side and negative seven on the negative side, and then plot my five key points. Since this is a graph of cosine, seven cosine of x over three, my graph should start at its maximum value. So again, positive cosine should start up at the maximum value. Uh, and then it will go to the middle line from the middle down to its minimum value, back to the middle and up to its maximum. And then I just connect those points. And lastly, I will label my five key points. So notice that this graph, just like the last one, ended at its period. So the period was six pi and the final point on this graph is six pi. As long as we don't have a phase shift, uh, our graphs should always start at zero and end at six pi. Uh, the phase shift is the element that we're going to be covering last. Without a phase shift, Every graph starts at zero and ends at the period. Problem five, I've got negative five sine of eight X. So I'll turn on the sine graph, adjust A down to negative five. So as this graph reflects over the X axis, uh, and then increase b up to eight. In fact, the slider won't go all the way there. Change it to eight. Okay. Once again, our domain is all real numbers. 
that amplitude should be the absolute value of A. In this case, A is negative five. So our amplitude is five. Period is two pi over B, where B is eight. So pi over four. That X scale is the period divided by four. So pi over four over four, which is pi over 16. Our minimum and maximum Y values will be negative five and five. Our range should be negative five to five. We still don't have a vertical shift or a phase shift. So once again, count out four tick marks along the X axis. And that scale should count by pi over 16. So one pi over 16, two pi over 16, three pi over 16, four pi over 16. Mark my minimum and maximum Y scales should be five and negative five. And I'm going to now go and plot my five key points. This was a graph of negative sign, which means my graph will start at its middle point again. But because it's negative sign, my first point will move down instead of up. But then I'll follow that same pattern. Middle, bottom, middle, top, middle and connect those points. And finally label them. Now problem six, negative two cosine of pi over six x. I'll turn on cosine, change a down to negative two, and b adjust down to be pi over six. It's gonna be pretty close to one half. Once again, the domain is always all real numbers. The amplitude should be the absolute value of A. The absolute value of two is negative two. B this time is pi over six. The period should be two pi divided by B. So two pi divided by pi over six is 12. That X scale is the period over four. So 12 over four, which is three. Minimum and maximum Y values are two and negative two. That range is negative two to two. And still no vertical shift or phase shift. Right. 
mark off four points along the x-axis and count by my x scale, three, six, nine, 12. Mark off my y scales, which should be at two and negative two. Now this is a graph of negative cosine, meaning my graph should start down at its minimum value. And then to the middle, then its maximum, back to its middle, and back to the minimum. and label those five key points.